<laughs> Would you say it's better than uh, someplace like Yale? Um, well, obviously I'm biased, but yes, I, I would say so. I would say it's very, very amazing here. Let's start. All right, welcome back, guys. Today we have another very special guest. His name is George, and we're going to be talking about a topic that I know a lot of you are probably pretty interested in because it's a, it's a really tough decision we have to make sometimes. And it's just going to be along the lines of, should I choose a top ranked institution to go to or a BSMD program? All right, so now George, can you walk us through a little bit about like your, uh, your application process and all that stuff? Yeah, so as a high schooler, I applied to, I think around 14 undergrads. And then I found out about like combined degree programs pretty late into the application process. So I only applied to six um, like BSMD programs. So like similarly to you, I think, except I think I applied to a little bit more, I applied like seven BSMD programs and like 15 or 16 undergrad schools. And I guess like, can you just walk us through a little bit of like the decision-making process after it was all over? Like, how'd you choose where you wanted to go? Yeah, so basically the biggest benefit that I saw from going to a BSMD program was basically like the reduced amount of stress that comes with it. So obviously like for our program, we have to maintain a 3.5 GPA and then get a 5 before in the MCAT, which is very, very, I guess, average, if you want to say. And basically like the guarantee, what? <laughs> I think it's below average, but okay. Yeah. But like the guarantee of getting into a medical school, as long as you maintain those two stats and don't go under GPA wise, mm -hmm. just like reduce the complete like amount of stress on me, which was very, very nice. Yeah. And I think that sounded the, really weird. The stress on you. Yeah. <laughs> Most kids who are applying to BSMD programs are probably like one of the top like few in their class. Right. And like, there's always that thought of like, Am I limiting myself and my career? Like, cause like sky's the limit, you know what I mean? Like, am I making a choice that's gonna like keep me in the middle of the pack for the rest of my life? And we're gonna address a, a few of those things later, but first we're just gonna talk about a few of the common uh, factors that you have to take into account when going to a college. And especially, they become especially important when comparing uh, whether or not you should go to like a BSMD program versus just a normal undergrad program so first thing is like student life a lot of people talk about like the college experience so now can you just talk a little bit about uh, what you think the college experience is like as a bsmd student and just like even though we we haven't necessarily had traditional undergrad like higher like ivy league like educations whether or not you think that would have made a big difference is there like if there's something in terms of student life that you regret um, no, I don't regret anything. So especially at Penn State, the student life is absolutely amazing here. Um, I so feel like I got uh, to. Would you say it's better than uh, someplace like Yale? Um, well, obviously I'm biased, but yes, I, I would say so. I would say it's very, very amazing here. So I thought Penn State student life was really, really great. Probably better than some of the IVs I got into. So basically Penn State has like one of the largest football programs in the country, which was absolutely amazing. Going to all the games and stuff, it was like the student, uh, the student section gets very, very crazy there. And then especially for undergrad, there's just so many people on campus that you get to experience so many different clubs, so many different activities, and there's always free things going on. So you're, you're like never really, I guess, like bored on campus because there's always something to do. Yeah, no, coming off of what you just said, definitely, I think a big school that has a BSMD program, I know there are a lot of smaller schools, but like the big schools like Penn State, like Stony Brook, Rutgers, like I know a lot of these big schools, even like BU, because they have so much like state funding and just because they're so big in general, a lot of like famous people will come to like give performances. Like mm -hmm. they, we have like excellent D1 sports. We have like all the facilities you could think of. Like we have what? four gyms or something like that like yeah four or five yeah like huge intramural buildings like anything you could think of like you can you can do and like get at our school and like in certain respect i would say there's more opportunity that comes to you in terms of like student life 
and even in terms of, like social if you want to go to a yeah. party if you want to like like the, the tailgating atmosphere like that's something you'll never ever uh, experience at like an ivy league something like that yeah absolutely now the next thing is can you just talk about like a little bit in terms of how cost uh impacted your decision yeah so i think going to a combined degree program that's either six years or seven years significantly reduces the cost of education because medical school is so expensive it's what like eighty thousand dollars a year mm -hmm. then having or being able to save a year of undergrad or even more will save i think forty or fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars and many people in our program actually graduate early so they graduate like a semester or two early so that's saving another semester's worth of tuition which i mean it adds up in the long run right mm -hmm. And then as well on that uh, point, for applications, you don't really have to apply. There's like basically no application process to get into uh, Jeff. So you oh, save yeah. money on traveling. You don't have to interview. You save lots of money from that. And I think it's overall just, just like a really great positive. Now, do you, do you think, uh, like I know a lot of people are like, you have that one chance in your life to go to like an Ivy League school, right? And I, I know a lot of uh, like Asian or like there there are people of all backgrounds that want to do this stuff, but especially a lot of like Asians and like Indians might be a little bit more well off and like money isn't the biggest issue. Even with yeah. money mm -hmm. not being the biggest issue, if your parents were like, uh, yeah, like we'll, we'll, we'll pay for like Ivy League if you go, like even if it's like, quarter million dollars we'll pay it we'll pay for your med school do you still think that the money saved is worth it in that case i mean i still think so yeah basically like the i feel like the money the fact that for regular pre-med you have to pay like all that money and you get so much more stress on yourself i feel like those two benefits combined for like being in a combined degree program like not having to spend that much money mm -hmm. it's just like it's good for like even even if you're wealthy enough to pay for it, which like I feel like a lot of people in our program have the means to pay for like their education because mm -hmm. for a lot of people, Penn State's like an out-of-state school. Mm -hmm. But just like being able to do that for your parents and not having to have them pay like what you said, a quarter million dollars. Maybe it's like maybe say fifty thousand dollars. That's like a full year's pay for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, being able to just like save that money, whether for med school or to like donate something like that, I feel like it's a great cause. So Josh, do you think that um, academically and research wise, that by not going to an Ivy League school that we're putting us putting ourselves at a disadvantage, like academically in terms of preparation for medical school? I'd be lying if I didn't say like, there is definitely a disadvantage of not going to a school like that, you know what I mean? Like, but the big thing I've noticed is like, for one, in terms of classes, like, you'll still have the challenging questions at Penn State. It's just, for example, if you went to like an Ivy League, they'd be like, yeah, you have no equation sheet. You're not allowed to use the equation sheet. Versus at Penn State, they're like, okay, you can, here's the equation sheet, you know what I mean? Or, mm -hmm. Yeah. At Penn State, they're like, here's the challenging, like, three bonus problems that you have at the end and at the Ivy League those are just part of your test like not part mm -hmm. of the bonus and in terms of research like I know uh, a lot of the big books you read a lot of the like famous uh, discoveries you'll see were made by uh, like people that came out of the Ivy League like I recently read a book about psychology called uh, Moral Tribes and that dude's like a professor at Harvard these top like Ivy League in institutions a lot of the professors there are the people who discovered like the things that you're learning about. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's a big benefit of going to a place like that. But I think you also can't like sell a place like Penn State short. You know what I mean? Like, like you know, like the hydride shift or whatever, like in Orgo, like mm -hmm. H moved on. Like that yeah. was discovered at Penn State, like calorimetry was invented at Penn State. Like mm -hmm. so, so much stuff that like state schools do for example like bsmd uh schools that offer bsmd programs there's there's so much stuff that their research programs are involved in like if you i bet if you looked up something like stony brook or like a place like Rutgers, penn state 
And of course, like a place like BU Northwestern, if you look at uh, the research that they've done that's contributed to society, there's probably like a considerable amount of research that they've also done that's like equally as important as what like the Ivy Leagues have done as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think in terms of academics, like you'd be you'd be lying to say that like the max you could learn is the same between the two schools. You know what I mean? Like the mm-hmm. you could learn from going to like Columbia is the same as like Penn State. Like obviously you could probably learn more from going to Columbia. But then again, would you rather like learn a tiny bit more and because of that like you drag your GPA down like you you have a lot more like mental anxiety or mm-hmm. like still more than you would need to like to, like pass the MCAT with like a good score and like do well in med school except like you're a lot less stressful and like you're you're a lot less stressed and like your mental health is a lot better. I don't know. I I feel like as someone who's going into medicine, not trying to become like an academic, you know what I mean? In terms of like, like become a chemist or something, like mm-hmm. find the right balance of like how good your school needs to be and like how good your mental health can be. Yeah. Speaking on the MCAT thing, I know a lot of people in our program do really, really well in the MCAT, yeah. which shows that like the education you get at Penn State is definitely enough mm-hmm. to like, be top 1%, top 0.1% mm-hmm. in the country in yeah. terms of like MS score. And definitely a lot of that comes down to the fact that like, when a lot of people think about like why they should go to an Ivy League over a BSMD program, I think one of the big things is just like prestige and like, am I limiting myself to like something that's like middle of the road when like, sky's the limit you know what i mean <laughs> and the big thing when you think about that is is just uh like you did well in high school not because for most people not because you went to the best high school in the country it's right because yeah. you were like driven yourself and as you just said like the people who are motivated themselves to do well can go to penn state they can go to community college i, I don't know if they go to community college but they can, yeah. they can go to like very low ranked colleges and still do really well on the MCAT. It's because like, it's not where you go that defines like how well you do. It's like Mm -hmm. how well you you want to do like personally, that defines a lot of that. I just want to give a few like disclaimers here. One, a lot of this doesn't doesn't apply as like, really if you're not sure you want to become a doctor. If yeah, if you're thinking about like going to an Ivy League versus like a BSMD program, but you're but you don't actually know that like in the end, being a doctor is what you want to do. You're just like I I kind of just got in and now I don't know what to choose. Then like suddenly attending a uh, a top uh, tier institution has a lot more. There's like a, there's a lot yeah. better of an argument that you can make there. It is a case by case basis. Well, I'd say for the most part, if you're certain you, you're like ninety certain that you want to become a doctor, mm-hmm. and like that's the path you want to take. The SMD program is a very good choice, but like, there's always that one or two like cases where like, like I'm not too certain. I don't know what I should do, or like, but like this place gave me like. X amount of money difference does that outweigh like the stress like and it's a case by case basis that like you have to make these decisions on but we're just trying to like give you our personal like why we chose and hope that it can like apply to a lot of other people who are also making similar choices we're not necessarily saying that like this is always the right choice that you have to make that like BSMD programs are always better than like choosing a traditional undergraduate path because there are a lot of like reasons for you to choose a traditional undergraduate path. Mm-hmm. If you if you have all the if you have the money, you're incredibly hardworking, and like stress isn't something that like phases you that much. Like certainly, and if you and like if your goal is just to become the number number one doctor in the world, like in like the highest academic setting, there's 
there's certainly an argument for like putting in the extra extra effort to try to get into a better medical school. But our point is is just that that's also possible by not going to the best medical school. And like for us it just didn't yeah. it was worth the extra time and effort. And I mean even our medical school, every single year we match people into the absolute top universities. Yeah. Like this year we had people get into Stanford, Harvard, like U Penn who like who are in like our uh, seven year med program mm -hmm. who match really, really well. So that just shows like we're not at like a disadvantage going through this program. And that as long as you have the personal drive and like motivation to like pursue your dreams, then you can reach them. So if you have, if you guys have any questions, feel free to just shoot a comment or uh, my Instagram, you can shoot me a DM. And this was George. It was nice talking to you, George. Yeah, nice talking to you too. Thank you guys. We hope this video was pretty helpful, even though we might not have covered all the topics. We tried to cover some of the big ones, like big factors that would influence your decision on whether or not you wanted to go to an IV or any top tier institute or a BSMD program. Please like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Peace. Thanks.